Welcome to Unit 7, Lesson 5. How many solutions? We are going to use graphs to investigate quadratic equations that have two solutions, one solution, or no solutions. This is a warm-up. There is a little quiz that you need to do. Uh, we're not going to discuss this in the video because really it's discussed in the quiz. So if you haven't done that yet, Go take the 5.1 practice quiz. It's not really for a grade. It's just for getting feedback. Make sure you read the answers after you've submitted your answers. There will be suggestions and ideas for feedback if you got any of those incorrect. All right, so we are on 5.2, solve by graphing. So Han is solving three different equations by graphing. I decided to, to label them A, B, and C so we can talk about them. To solve the first equation, oh, sorry about that. To solve the first equation, the quantity x minus 5 times the quantity x minus 3 equals 0, he chose to graph y equals x minus 5 times x minus 3. And then he looked for the x-intercepts of the graph. So I'm going to pull that over so we can see what that looks like. If you have a calculator and you want to graph that on your own, that's great. You could also go to desmos.com and graph it as well. So that's the graph that I got. Explain why the x-intercepts can be used to solve this equation. So we're gonna look at this and say, okay, why are, this is my x-axis right here. Why would the, those intercepts be the solution to when y equals zero, right? When this equation is equal to y, and then in place of y, we plug in zero. Well, notice in our x, y coordinates, what do you notice there? Yeah, the y value is always a zero when we're on that x axis. All right, what are the solutions? All right, so when does y equal zero? Well, when when x equals 3, right here, and when x equals 5, right here. Great. Okay, now we're going to look at the next one where it has this plus 1. Okay, so I'm going to clear what we had here and move this one out of the way. Okay, so now we're going to look at the second equation. So I went and graphed it. My graph is in green. Uh-oh. Sorry, I'm trying to grab my graph. There it is. Okay. So here's the second graph. And to solve the second equation, Han wrote that, right? So it started out looking like this. It had the negative one on one side, but he changed it and he wrote it like that. Hmm. Okay. So he moved that negative one to the other side and made it plus one. He then graphed that. All right, use technology, then use the graph to solve the equation. Be prepared to explain how you use your graph for solving. Hmm. All right, so I want to know when does this equation, when does this equation equal zero? All right, when does the y value equal zero? So here, these are our y values. y equals 4, y equals 2, y equals 1, y equals 0. So we can see this graph touches one time when x equals 4. So at x equals 4, that is the solution to that second equation. All right, that makes sense. So let's clear this off again. Then I was asking for you to solve the third one. So I want you to take a moment, either get online to desmos.com and practice graphing this, oops, <laughs> practice graphing that third equation right here. Um, figure out how would you find the solution. So go ahead and pause, try it on your own, and then hit play again. We'll talk about it. Okay, so it says solve the third equation using Han's strategy. So that means we're going to take this equation, x minus 5, times x minus 3, and we're going to add 4 to both sides, because that's what Han did in the previous problem, and he set one side equal to 0, right? He moved that negative 4, so one side equals 0. 
Then he went and graphed that equation and found when is it going to equal zero. Whoa, this is my equation. So I'm looking here, because here y is 6, here y is 4, here y is 2, and here's where y equals 0. Is there any graph that crosses? There is no graph there. So I don't see any solutions. I don't, it never touches. It's never going to equal 0. So, all right. Why might it be helpful to rearrange each equation to equal 0 on one side and then graph the expression on the non-zero side? So why would that be helpful? Well, if I set it equal to 0, then I can look right here and focus on this x-axis and see where does that graph, that parabola, touch this x-axis or when y equals 0, right? y equals 0 is the x-axis. How many solutions does each of the three equations have? All right, let's clear this off again. So each of the equations, let's see, we had um, on the first one we looked at, it had two solutions. It crossed the x-axis twice. And the second one, it crossed only one time. And the third one, you saw it had no solutions. It did not touch the x-axis. It didn't equal zero ever. The y value didn't equal zero ever. All right. The next activity is we're going to analyze some errors. So I think we have Priya, Maya, and Diego are all working on some problems. And we're going to check to see if we can figure out what their errors are. So I want you to hit pause again, read through the question, decide, do you agree? And if you disagree, then think about what went wrong? What was the mistake in Priya's reasoning? Okay, take a minute, pause, and then hit play. Okay, so this is asking us to consider this equation here, and Priya reasons that if this is true, then each factor, if she sets each factor equal to 7, right, uh, so the solutions to the original equation are 12 and 16. So she got 12 by adding 5 to both sides. Sorry, it's a little sloppy. And then here she added, I'm sorry, subtracted 1. So that's how she got her 12 and her 7, because she subtracted 1. Or she got her 6, 12 and 6. Hmm. But do we agree with this reasoning? One method you may have tried is you, you may have tried plugging 12 in and 6 into the equation. If you did that, 12 minus 5 is 7, and 7 times 13, does that equal 7? Uh, obviously not. No, no, that's not going to work. Okay, so that's incorrect. And then 6 minus 5 would be 1, and 6 plus 1 is 7. Oh, so 1 times 7 does equal 7. Wow, so she did stumble upon a correct answer. But let's think about her reasoning. Oops, sorry, I'm trying to pull this over. Stay. No. There we go. Okay. So I think what Priya was considering was the zero product property. Any number times zero equals zero. Right? That's a zero product property that we've worked with. If we have a product of two numbers that's equal to zero, we can set each factor equal to zero and find some solutions. Now, Priya was extending that and saying, oh, hey, well, any number times 7 is going to equal 7. Is that a true statement? Because she's saying, hey, since it's equal to 7, any number times 7 is going to equal 7. Is that true? Ah, if I put a 1 or a 2 or a 3, will it always equal 7? No, definitely not. It would only equal 7 if I had a 1 times 7. So this zero product property that we talked about in the past, it's very important that one side equals zero before we start working with this, right? So this right here, this seven, is going to make us not be able to use that zero product property. Consider x squared minus 10x equals zero. Diego says to solve, we can just divide each side by x to get x minus 10 equals zero. So the solution is 10. So Diego says, divide by x, he got one solution, x 
equals 10. Now Maya says, I wrote the expression on the left in factored form, which gives this in factored form equals zero and ended up with two solutions, zero and 10. So Maya factored first and got two solutions, x equals zero, x equals 10. Do you agree with either strategy? And explain your reasoning. So think about that for a second. Pause if you need some time to think about that. Okay, so they both agree on the answer x equals 10. So there's something correct in both of their approaches. But my got an extra answer. Do you think we should have one solution or two solutions in this case? Well, we can see in factored form, if we set each part equal to zero, we have two solutions. Now, Diego chose to divide by x. Something special happens if I take x squared minus 10x equals zero, and I divide both sides by x, what happens is we get x minus 10 equals zero. One of our solutions just disappears. x equals zero disappears. And there's, there's an error here because we're not allowed to divide by zero. So mathematically, we shouldn't be dividing by x. So Diego's method, although an interesting approach, was a little bit mathematically flawed, and Maya had a great idea to factor first. All right, thank you for watching. Make sure you try some practice problems and do your weekly quiz when you're done.